Drivers, I accepted every single Uber Eats order for almost a year and a half. This means I have proof for almost everything I'm gonna share next. Now, you're likely thinking of two things. Either, wow, I am impressed, or you're a fool for doing such things. Here's the question for you. Is it worthwhile to get your acceptance rate to 100% on Uber Eats and then keep it there? My name is Russ and I love helping you benefit from my vast experience doing gig work part-time since late 2018. In this video, I'm gonna give you a brief background on this experiment. I'm gonna share results and then I'm gonna give you the way ahead. The best part is you're immediately gonna benefit from the key learnings in this video without having to spend an entire year and a half of your life, which you'll never get back, doing the same thing. I really also hope that the ad revenue from this video is gonna help compensate me for my time on the grind doing all this research for you. If you don't skip through the ads, that would be fantastic. Thank you for considering my request. Now on YouTube, I've seen creators do challenges, but they only do them for a short time. This means they might not have enough data to prove an assumption is fact or myth. That's why I did this experiment. I planned to follow it through to completion. Now granted, I had no idea it was gonna take this long. I thought it would be a few months at the most. I've made previous videos around this topic, so watch them again to gain insights on how Uber Eats manages their acceptance rate calculations. Now this doesn't stop the apps from manipulating and harassing you for a low acceptance rate. The concept is quite simple. All the gig apps can easily choose how much they're gonna pay you, the driver, to deliver their order to the customer. If the pay is too low, then you're not gonna accept the order. Factors such as pay, distance, and drop-off location all play into deciding if an offer is good for you, the driver. Pay is obvious as your time has value and you should be paid a fair wage. We don't work for charity. Distance is massive because we're using our own vehicles, which will wear out one day. The gig app company isn't gonna buy you a newer car. This means that the less you drive, the better. Location plays another massive factor because we wanna deliver order after order. Will there be orders if you're out delivering in the middle of nowhere? So consider potential dead miles in their offer. I'm not fully against long distance deliveries as you tend to get better gas mileage, but there have to be more opportunities to get orders at the drop off location. Now, don't get completion or cancellation rate confused with acceptance rate. The gig app company needs to rely on you when you accept an order that you will fulfill your responsibility. This impacts their operations and rightly hold it against you if you fail to do your job once you've accepted an order. I think gig app companies care about their acceptance rate because the more orders you accept, then in theory, the less drivers they need to hire. Driver saturation is a topic best left for another time. Here are the results from almost a year and a half of diligently taking every Uber Eats order. It took me a year to get to 100%, and then I spent almost six months at 100% to determine if Uber Eats was gonna unlock some secret, high paying, low mileage orders. You can easily find this information in your own Uber Eats earning stats each week. You just need to contemplate what your data means. I'll share mine now. There was no change on how fast I complete orders at 21 minutes per trip for both acceptance rate. I was active on an order 39% of the time before and at 100% acceptance rate, I'm active at less than 34%. This just isn't inspiring. I would think more orders would come my way if acceptance rate really mattered. I was online an average of 53 minutes before I would get an order, and at 100%, I was online 62 minutes. This means I'm online longer between trips, and this is not good. Base pay was $640 per order, and at 100%, it's $594, which is less and terrible. This works out to 51% before and 42% now of total pay coming from the base pay. Here in California, we do get Prop 22 money, which is a little extra in exchange for not being considered employees. Don't get bogged down right now on Prop 22 in the context of this video, because that's an entirely different and important topic. 
adding the base pay plus Prop 22 before was 861 per order and after it's 911. This works out to 18% before and 23% now. This seems good on the surface, but when you look at that decrease in base pay that I just covered, it's clear that Prop 22 is making up that difference. What does this mean if you reside at a location that doesn't have Prop 22 type law? Base pay and tips are all you're gonna have. Speaking of tips, let's look at the total pay encompassing base pay, Prop 22, and tips. The average works out before at $12.68 and now $13.99 per order. This is higher. Am I really making that much more? Most states don't have a Prop 22 type law. Tips before were 32% of total earnings and now tips are 35%. So yes, tips have gone up 3% by accepting all orders. That is interesting for sure. These are all insightful and useful facts. Here's my overall assessment of getting to and maintaining a 100% acceptance rate. I multi-app and I track overall mileage for personal and business. I don't track mileage by gig app. I do feel now that I've driven far more miles than before when doing food delivery. Before this experiment, I would refuse to take low pay or low pay and high mileage orders. In 2021, I drove 8,700 miles. In 2022, that was 7,200. 2023, it was 8,500 miles. To date, I've driven 4,110 miles, which if nothing changed, that would be 8,200 miles per year. So I'll guess that I'm driving another 1,000 miles due to Uber Eats. The standard mileage rate is 67 cents per mile, so that means I spent an extra $670 operating my car taking every Uber Eats order. In 2022, I made $3,413 on Uber Eats. The next year, I made $3,844. So far, I'm at $1,657. When you do the math, that works out to roughly $2,840 for 2024. So in general, I'm making the same as I did in 2022 before putting that extra thousand miles on my car. This means it's a wash to take every order in 2023, and I'm actually doing worse in 2024. I need to stop this ridiculous experiment now because it's really costing me. I'm clearly making less and I can't prove why. Again, I multi-app and there may be less orders overall with the many drivers that come to this area to work, but Overall, I feel that it's foolish to continue maintaining a 100% acceptance rate. Next, the data proves out that I'm also getting less orders at 100% and lower pay. What if it's because I'm taking longer distance orders and I'm missing the opportunity to do more orders per hour? This means that other drivers are gonna get those orders. What if because I'm accepting all orders, Uber Eats singles me out for the worst orders because they know that I've demonstrated I'm gonna take them. What this means is that other drivers are getting the higher paying orders, something to think about. Last, overall this experiment was not worth my time and I don't ever plan on doing it again. This means that you should not try this at home. You would definitely feel the increased expenses and less earnings if you take every order if you live in a state that doesn't offer the extra pay from Prop 22 type laws. Again, this extra pay makes up 23% of my earnings. This means that you would fare even worse than I am now. In appreciation for my 18 months of research, please do like the channel and video if you got some value. Did it pique your interest on why it took so long for me to get to 100% acceptance rate on Uber Eats? Based on many months of data, I broke down the trends on how very many orders it took as I slowly increased my acceptance rate. You can learn about that here. You know what, just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and get my acceptance rate back up to 100% and just see how many orders it's gonna take. So that'll probably be the last video on that series and I'll see you later.